Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lillian Brady and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow in the lab of Dr. Aaron Calipari in the Department of Pharmacology and the Vanderbilt Center for Addiction Research. And I'll be discussing my work which focuses on sex-specific cholinergic regulation of dopamine release mechanisms in the nucleus accumbens underlying substance use disorder with specific emphasis on the nicotinic system. So in recent years, sex has been pinpointed as a significant biological factor impacting the prevalence and prognosis of substance use disorder. For example, women represent a particularly vulnerable population and have consistently shown to be more susceptible to substance use disorder. This has been seen in animal models and human subjects where females show increases in drug taking and transition to substance use disorder faster than their male counterparts. In contrast, basic and preclinical studies for substance use disorder have historically either focused almost entirely on male subjects or overwhelmingly neglected to analyze the data by sex. Now this male biased basic and preclinical research and the subsequent pharmacological drugs and medications approved to treat substance use disorders for everyone can cause detrimental side effects for females that often go undetected. And the adverse effects of this bias in basic and preclinical research could be due to the fact that for some behaviors or processes, the expression of a trait may look the same for males and females, but there are sex differences in the underlying neural mechanisms that mediate those behaviors or phenotypes. This has led me to seek to determine how the neural circuits that underlie substance use disorder are differentially regulated in males and females. To do this, I'm focusing on the dopamine system, which is central to female vulnerability to addiction, specifically dopaminergic projections in the mesolimbic dopamine pathway, which connects the ventral tegmental area in the midbrain to the nucleus accumbens located in the ventral striatum, and is where nearly all drugs of abuse increase dopamine levels. Importantly, dopamine in the accumbens is regulated by two key components, action potential firing from dopamine cell bodies in the VTA and heterosynaptic terminal regulation, which is independent of cell body firing from the VTA. Now, while sex differences research in substance use disorder has historically focused on the anatomy and function of dopamine neurons and relative dopamine levels between males and females, sex differences in terminal and microcircuit regulation have often been overlooked. So at the terminal in the accumbens, dopamine is released both tonically and phasically. Tonic dopamine release is characterized by slow and irregular stimulation, releasing only small amounts of dopamine, setting the steady state or background levels of dopamine in the extracellular space. In contrast, phasic dopamine release is caused by behaviorally relevant stimuli, leading dopamine neurons to fire in short burst spikes, resulting in large amounts or enhanced dopamine release. And one particularly powerful regulator of terminal dopamine release mechanisms are cholinergic interneurons signaling through the release of acetylcholine onto nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. These receptors have a number of subtypes and within the accumbens on dopamine terminals, the most common nicotinic receptors contain a pentameric combination of alpha-4 and beta-2 subunits that are activated endogenously by acetylcholine or exogenously by nicotine. Pharmacologically, when nicotinic receptors are activated by acetylcholine or nicotine, these receptors let the low stimulations pass and tonic levels of dopamine release are enhanced while phasic activity is reduced. In contrast, when these receptors are blocked by antagonists, it removes the low-pass filter, thereby decreasing tonic dopamine release while at the same time increasing phasic activity. So using male and female mice, the overall goal of my research has been to define and characterize sex differences in cholinergic regulation of tonic and phasic dopamine release mechanisms through nicotinic receptors in the nucleus accumbens. To do this, I use pharmacological approaches combined with ex vivo fast scan cyclic voltammetry. So this is an analytical chemistry technique that measures subsecond release and clearance of oxidizable molecules like dopamine in response to behaviorally relevant stimuli applied with a stimulating electrode. 
In this technique, a carbon fiber microelectrode that oxidizes and reduces dopamine is placed in the field of the accumbens, and the change in current at dopamine's oxidation and reduction potential is dopamine's unique neurochemical signature. So using this technique, I applied a series of tonic and phasic stimulation patterns in accumbens slices from males and females to establish a baseline of tonic and phasic dopamine release. Then I applied a drug called DH-beta-E, which blocks the alpha-4 beta-2 containing nicotinic receptors expressed on presynaptic dopamine terminals in the accumbens to isolate the effect of cholinergic regulation of dopamine release mechanisms through nicotinic receptors. So this figure shows some example traces and color plots of dopamine release. In the example traces above, the higher peaks indicate more dopamine is being released. And in the color plots below, the amount of green signal that you see represents the amount of dopamine present after stimulation. So more green means more dopamine. So first looking at the effect in males, you can see that that application of DH-beta-E reduced tonic dopamine release and enhanced phasic dopamine release. And this graph of dopamine release at each frequency shows a decrease at one pulse and increase at the 20 hertz frequency. In contrast to the males, that application of DH-beta-E did not have a significant effect on tonic or phasic dopamine release in females. So overall, this suggests a sex-specific regulation of dopamine release by the cholinergic system through nicotinic receptors on dopamine terminals, where in males we see what is expected with nicotinic receptor antagonism, but in females there seems to be no cholinergic regulation of dopamine neurotransmission at dopamine terminals. So my initial observation is that there is a sex difference in nicotinic receptor regulation of dopamine release. And there are a variety of mechanisms that could explain these sex differences, including receptor subunit expression. Additionally, nicotinic receptor desensitization could be involved, as well as hormonal regulation. So I first wanted to determine whether nicotinic receptor subunits are expressed at the same level in females compared to males. And what we found from using PCR at dopamine cell bodies in the VTA was that there was no difference in nicotinic receptor mRNA expression in any of the subunits that are consistently known to be expressed on dopamine terminals. So this suggests that the sex difference observed in cholinergic regulation of dopamine release through nicotinic receptors is not an organizational difference between males and females. And levels of nicotinic receptor subunit expression on dopamine terminals does not explain the lack of cholinergic modulation in females. Next, I wanted to determine the role of nicotinic receptor desensitization. So if you're familiar with the function of these receptors, you know that one important aspect of these receptors is that they are known to be subject to desensitization. Or in other words, there is a loss of response or inactivity of these receptors after continuous or repeated application of endogenous or exogenous agonists. So to determine if there are differences in nicotinic receptor desensitization, I applied the exogenous agonist nicotine. And here I show the dose response curve, which revealed that increasing concentrations of nicotine initially enhances dopamine release in both males and females with greater effects in males. We see a significant increase in dopamine release only in the males at a lower concentration, but at the highest concentration when the receptors are desensitized, the decreased levels of dopamine are about the same for both sexes. So this means that nicotinic receptors are desensitized in both sexes at the highest concentrations of nicotine, but we see reduced agonist effects of nicotine on dopamine release in females, which is what we expect if the receptors are pre-desensitized pre or if the rate of desensitization is faster in the females compared to the males. So I just showed you that there appears to be a sex difference in nicotinic receptor desensitization. Next, I wanted to determine the role of hormonal regulation in the sex differences observed in cholinergic regulation of dopamine release through nicotinic receptors. To determine the role of hormonal regulation, I first focused on estracycle-dependent ovarian hormone fluctuations, specifically focusing on 17-beta-estradiol, or E2, which is considered the most potent estrogen hormone 
because it usually circulates in the highest concentrations compared to other estrogen hormones and it has been linked to changes in dopamine release, specifically in substance use disorder. So female mice have a similar hormone cycle to humans called the estrus cycle, which is about four to five days in length and is divided into four stages, proestrus and estrus when estrogen levels are higher and metestrus and diestrus when estrogen levels are lower. And to determine the role of the estrous cycle in nicotinic receptor regulation of tonic and phasic dopamine release, I tracked the estrous cycle of a separate cohort of female mice by vaginal cytology, and then again used slice voltammetry in the accumbens applying a series of tonic and phasic stimulation patterns before and after bath application of DH beta E. So in this cohort of female mice, I found that although tonic and phasic dopamine release were enhanced when females were in estrus compared to diestrus, which is seen here by comparing the control conditions represented by the closed triangles, there was no difference in the effects of DH beta E between the cycle stages. So this shows that the estrus cycle is likely not contributing to the observed sex differences in cholinergic regulation of tonic and phasic dopamine release through nicotinic receptors. I also repeated the voltammetry experiments in another cohort of mice, including ovaryectomized females. So these are female mice that have their ovaries removed to investigate the extent at which the loss of fluctuating ovarian hormone activity affects the ability of DH beta E to modulate tonic and phasic dopamine release. And this data shows that the effects on dopamine release can be rescued in females by ovaryectomy. So females are still capable of exhibiting dopaminergic regulation by nicotinic receptors. The receptors are functional and hormonal factors may still be involved. Next, I looked at the dose response relationship of E2 on dopamine release. And when I normalized the data to the percent of baseline without estradiol in both males and females, there was greater biologic activity of estradiol on dopamine release in males compared to females. Additionally, I was able to block the potentiating effects of E2 on dopamine release by first applying the nicotinic receptor antagonist DH beta E. So these graphs show that the potentiating effects of E2, which is in orange and represented by the control conditions, are blocked by the application of the nicotinic receptor antagonist DH beta E. However, this effect is only seen in males and ovaryectomized females. Overall, suggesting that estradiol enhances dopamine release through an alpha-4 beta-2 nicotinic receptor mediated mechanism, but in naturally cycling females, estradiol is still able to potentiate dopamine release through other avenues, possibly estrogen receptors. And so our conclusion thus far is that estradiol, or E2, potentiates nicotinic receptors on dopamine terminals, rendering them desensitized and less able to modulate phasic release, or the behaviorally relevant stimuli that accompanies phasic release. So what we are thinking is that in intact females, sustained activation of these nicotinic receptors via endogenous estradiol leads to desensitization of nicotinic receptors, and really reduces subsequent cholinergic modulation of dopamine release. And so with that, I want to acknowledge and thank my primary mentor, Dr. Aaron Calipari, as well as all of the Calipari lab members, specifically my collaborators within the lab and the undergraduates that I have been able to work with. I also want to acknowledge my academic pathways and Mosaic K99 mentoring committees, our collaborators on this work, my department and center for all of their help and support, as well as my funding sources. So thank you for your time and I will take any questions if you have them.